Okay, hi there. Welcome to a short, focused update video on some of the key macroeconomic indicators for the UK economy in 2021. Last year, 2021, was an, a really important year of partial recovery from the first phase of the COVID pandemic. Now, I think uh, given the importance of exams in 2022, having a good awareness of some key UK macro indicators is vital to help you getting those top marks for application in your 2022 papers. So let's build a summary, a key summary of what has happened to the UK economy in 2021. First of all, let's turn to output. Real GDP, the value of goods and services produced within the economy, adjusted for inflation. Real GDP grew by 7.5%. That is a very fast rate of growth after falling by 9.4% during 2020. So let's look at the chart for GDP. This is the monthly index all the way back to 2020, uh, 2007. That was, of course, just a short while before the global financial crisis. And you can see that there was a very large 9.4% fall in 2020 because of the impact of the coronavirus pandemic and the public health restrictions, including lockdown. But UK GDP grew by an annual rate of 7.5% in 2021. And as you can see, the UK economy grew above its pre-pandemic size for the first time in November 2021. Now, that was the fastest growth seen among the G7 countries, the group of seven leading advanced industrialised nations. And uh, the, the government's trumpeted that as a, as a very positive sign. However, the key point to remember is that uh, while 7.5% is excellent, the UK is recovering from a lower base. The percentage, of course, is sensitive to the base effect. And having fallen by 9.4% in 2020, that was a steeper downturn than any other G7 member. In fact, only Spain experienced a deeper downturn amongst the high-income countries. Spain is not in the G7. What about jobs? Well, in 2021, the unemployment rate went up and then came down. So the unemployment rate has been declining over most of the past year. And it's currently just 4.1% of the labour market. You can see the increase in the early stages of the pandemic as jobs were lost. The increase in unemployment, of course, was mitigated significantly by government measures, including the, the furlough scheme. Uh, it's, been, it's been falling essentially since the end of uh, 2020 uh, and is now at 4.1%. Indeed, the number of people in jobs has recovered uh, the falls that we saw after the furlough scheme ended in the autumn of 2021. The unemployment rate is now below pre-COVID levels. And as we'll see in a few seconds, job vacancies are at a record high. However, although unemployment is 4.1% and falling, and that's great news, uh, some of the some of the cause of that is that about half a million people, mainly over 50s, have left the labour market and are now economically inactive. A number of causes behind this, one of which is the impact of long COVID. And there's also a hint that the, the COVID pandemic has caused many people to reassess their work-life balance and perhaps uh, consider early retirement if they can afford to retire. Point three is linked to the previous point. There is now a record level of job vacancies in the UK labour market. This is one of those stats that's definitely worth knowing about. And here's the chart showing it. Um, from November 2021 to January 22, that last period, there was a record number of vacancies of 1.3 million. Staggering increase in number of vacancies. Well, this, the, the chart here goes basically back 20 years worth of data We've never seen so many unfilled vacancies. And that is a sign of a tightening labour market where the balance between labour demand and labour supplies is tilting in favour of, of labour shortages. Now, in a tight labour market, the balance of wage bargaining power might, might be tilting back towards employees. In other words, they can bid for better pay, especially in sectors where there are big, large, persistent shortages, shortages of skilled workers. Now, what about inflation? This is important. 
consumer price inflation in 2021 and the latter stages of the year, and as we've headed into the most recent period, has accelerated, has surged to a 30-year high. So inflation reached a 30-year high in December 2021. And of course, there's now huge concern about the rising cost of living. Uh, consumer price inflation is the annual percentage rate at which prices of goods and services bought by households are, are rising. This is the consumer price index data in the chart. Inflation reached 5.4% in December 2021. That's the fastest growth since March 1992. And this is clearly a major issue to be aware of as we head into revision for the exams. Indeed, CPI inflation is now further above the Bank of England's 2% target than at any point since we've had an inflation target, and that dates back to October 1992. The cost of living crisis is real, is undoubtedly real. It's going to impact many millions of households. And one of the issues is that lower income families are expected to be hardest hit by, for example, rising food and energy prices. Real disposable incomes are set to fall in, with prices and taxes increasing. So with inflation at 5.5% and the forecast to rise still further, wage growth has been fairly strong, of course, because of the tight labour market. But there is now a real wage squeeze. We've had several, one after the financial crisis, one post-Brexit referendum. Um, wages are struggling to keep pace with prices. And the government's announced a series of tax increases. Uh, national insurance is set to rise in April. Uh, we also know, of course, the big rise in the energy price cap is going to cause energy bills to soar. So there's no doubt about it that uh, real disposable incomes, having been fairly flat in 2021, will fall in 2022. Here's the Bank of England suggesting that households will face the worst squeeze on real disposable incomes for the best part of three decades. So whilst real incomes are falling, house prices continue to rise. They increased by an average of 10%, 10% again in 2021. There's the chart showing the average house price increasing to over 270,000 in the year to November 2021. Uh, the average house price at the end of 2021 was, was something like £25,000 higher than uh, this time last year. Now, can this continue? Well, house prices may start to struggle in the near term, especially if the Bank of England sends more signals that they're willing to increase interest rates to control inflation, because, of course, that would feed into higher mortgage rates as well. But if house prices continue to stay high and rise, property affordability will be one of the chronic problems in the housing market. And, of course, with rents continuing to, to outpace growth of people's incomes, this is a big barrier to the mobility of labour. And, well, our final point is that the Bank of England has started to raise interest rates. So 2021 was the year when the period of very, very low interest rates perhaps began to change. They're now at 0.5%. Uh, as this chart shows, it's taken from the Bank of England. Well, they're back to where they were just well, back in 2018, of course, the bank cut them to 0.1% in the immediate aftermath of the COVID pandemic. So base rate now at 0.5%. And I guess this is crucial. The Monetary Policy Committee have agreed to tighten or unwind quantitative easing. So they're going to unwind the, 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 the purchases of bonds um, by the Bank of England, mainly from, uh, mainly from government bonds. The International Monetary Fund has urged the Bank of England to go further in raising interest rates. They believe that demand growth is too strong and that inflation, you know, inflationary pressures need to be, uh, need to be controlled uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, the Bank of England, the, the IMF published a report on the UK economy at the end of 2021 uh, and said that the Bank of England had allowed inflation to get out of control. It was finding excuses to do nothing at its regular meetings and it needed to avoid inaction bias. Quite interesting. And certainly in normal circumstances, you know, inflation is essentially three times the official target of 2%. In most normal circumstances, a central bank would be acting pretty decisively to increase base interest rates to control inflation. 
So there does seem to be continued policy and action at the bank, which risks them losing some credibility. The bank thinks that inflation, the inflation rise is largely temporary. 2022 may well prove to be the year when that, uh, that view becomes slightly discredited. Just to round off, we've looked at some of the key issues, key data from 2021. What about some of the issues to have in mind in 2022? Well, one of the uncertainties is how high inflation will reach. The Bank of England thinks it's going to be as high as 7.5% by the spring of 2022. And will that rise in inflation be temporary uh, or will it be persistent? In which case, uh, we're in a different situation. Will there be a wage price spiral as workers ask for large pay rises in order to combat the effects of rising inflation? Will uh, supply side pressures continue to be uh, difficult? Will global and European oil and gas prices stay high? Of course, much depends there on geopolitics. Will we, will we still, still see those global supply chain frictions uh, constraining production, certainly affected industries like retailing and also things like car manufacturing? How much further will the Bank of England move on interest rates? 0.5% at the moment. What can we expect in 2022? Perhaps two, possibly three or four interest rate rises. Could they be as high as 2% by the end of the year? Those tax rises I mentioned, including national insurance, what impact will those have on UK economic growth? And the housing market has defied expectations in 2020 and 2021. Can property prices continue to rise at such a fast rate or is that unsustainable and not good news for the health of the economy well keep an eye out for our special revision videos on key macro topics and issues because uh, they're going to focus on the advanced notice information provided by the exam boards for your may and june 2022 papers but i hope you enjoyed this quick overview of some of the key macro indicators for the uk Stay curious, stay safe, and hopefully see you again sometime soon.